live from the basement car park at Area 51 and broadcast worldwide in association with leading radio stations via the internet. It's the Elegant Universe. Your hosts abducted from Melbourne, Australia. Here's Peter Gagliardi and Shane Hill. Welcome to this week's edition of the Elegant Universe, live on 94.1 FM, worldwide over the internet and through affiliated stations on the 3WBC network. And also with me, Moonlight becomes her, but she's even better in the dark with a bottle, it's Susie J. <laughs> <laughs> I love my new intro, it yeah. just encapsulates me. Okay. <laughs> what Today, have I have more tongue twisters for you two, oh, cool. and yeah. Haley, you weren't here last week, but I got these two working out their tongue. Wow. And, oh, yeah. wasn't the ending good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stop this. Live stop insects this. <laughs> found living inside human beings. And the weirdest places bodies have been found. Plus, we have special guests. One part of a comedy duo from Two Brown Sugars. Mm-hmm. And also, romantic singer extraordinaire, Wilfredo. Oh, cool. That sounds excellent. And now, the only girl we know who can communicate with plankton, it's Hayley. Wow. <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, so this week, <laughs> I have the horoscopes for April, and, oh. and they are some beautiful futures ahead of you. And also, oh, I have a couple of very interesting conspiracies about Snow White. Ah, Excellent. I always thought there was something sus going on there. Okay, and now to your host, a man who's so dumb we have to water him twice a week. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Actually, there's not one person in this room who thinks you're a fool, Pete. But who are we to argue with millions of listeners? Oh, uh, thanks, guys. It's good to know that I'm loved. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. This week pretty much is a pretty exciting week because uh, guess what? They found out Tyrannosaurus Rexes ate each other. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm. That's pretty cool. Well, and one of the not, dinosaurs. Kind of not surprised to hear that they ate each other. Well, you mm. know, it, it wasn't known. Let's oh, just okay. say that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and also the uh, Brontosaurus. Yeah. Is, has been re- reinstated as a dinosaur again. So that's pretty exciting. When, when was it not? It's huge. It's got. This they thought they mixed up different dinosaur bones and, you know, all yeah. that sort of thing. They created but, their own yeah. dinosaur. Which but it, it's a real dinosaur. Yeah. So does that mean he's been demoted? Yeah, he got demoted, demoted. and now he's, he's being promoted. Oh, so. back to, oh, it, was, yeah. it was like the whole Pluto story, but now it's a real planet again. But mm. Pluto isn't still. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. Well, like Brontosaurus came to work drunk. Yeah. They're like, right, you're down to Janet to work, and now yeah. he's back up you to the cash register. You are not a dinosaur. Yeah. This is no <laughs> way for a dinosaur to behave. You're listening to The Elegant Universe, where all the science and mystery, the weird and the bizarre live. Coming up later, our special guests are so stay tuned. We'll be back after this. It is pointless to resist. Good morning, good evening, and welcome back wherever you may be in this big, wide, wonderful world of ours. Thank you for taking a little bit of your day and joining us here at the Elegant Universe. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I just met our guest. Yep. Oh Wilfredo has arrived. He's a yes. stunner, isn't he? Yeah, this Could is I? going to be... <laughs> Amazing. Can I just say, mm. oh, you're in love? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit hot under the collar and I don't even have Hot-dose. one on. <laughs> or underwear. <laughs> um, uh, afterwards, <laughs> later on, afterwards, later on, mm. we're going to put photographs of Wilfredo with Susie and Willie. Hayley and the whole gang. I'm yeah. calling him Willie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, photographs will be on the <laughs> Facebook page. You'll be able to just see just how amazing this guy really is. Can't wait to get him on the show. It's going to be fun. We can feel that. We sense that. We know that I already. Did feel it too. Horoscopes. Okay. <laughs> so Aquarius, this month a massive earthquake will announce the arrival of a new fault line in Earth's crust, right underneath your house. Oh, fantastic! It's always a fun time for Aquarius mm. and Pisces. Pisces, this month you'll be heartbroken to find out that two more members of One Direction have left or come to their senses. I won't tell you which ones. Could it be your favourite? Is it at always? Yep. So they're no longer a boy band, they're a boy, what? A boy. A A boy. boy. (laughs) A boy. (laughs) Okay, now because we've got such a hot special guest, I really want to warm my tongue up. (laughs) And uh, 
I think uh, <laughs> That's funny. I think oh, uh, I'm sweating. Big. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm also and Haley wasn't here last week, no. and I think Haley needs to get on into this tongue twisting because goodness knows where we're going to need to twist it today, people. Okay, all right. Uh, so here we go. So okay. you all need to say this after me, paying attention. Go on. Yep. Hop, hop. Yep. Let's go. The sixth sick sheik's sixth. Sheep's sick. Now, apparently, what? this is the world's hardest tongue twister, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't even know what that was. The okay, you ready? Sheik. The sixth sick. Sheik. 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 The sixth sheik. The sixth sheik. 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 Yep, we did it. Go. We the just did it. The sixth. Hang on, wait a minute. Sixth sheep sick. Say it again. The sixth sheik. 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 No, the <laughs> sixth, six sheik, six. No, and your time's up. It is now. <laughs> oh, come on. The sixth sheik, no, six. Six, six <laughs> sheik. That's what I said. The sixth sheik. Hang on, sheik. hang on. No, six, 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 six sheik, 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 sheep, six. Sheep. You can't even read it. How do you expect <laughs> to say it? I'm saying it slowly for you guys sheik. to hear oh. it. Hang on, hang on. Okay, the. Sixth, six sheep, six sheep, six. Oh, oh right. So right. Okay, okay. I feel like I'm about to accidentally swear on air, just <laughs> trying to get my <laughs> mouth around it. Okay, you're going to have one more go? Okay, all right. The six sheep, six, six no, sheep no, was very all. sick. The six I'm sick. banning tongue twisters. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is one for me. Okay. Okay. For you. Okay. About me. All right. Okay. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop where she sits, she shines, where she shines, she sits. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop where she sits, she, she shines, she shines she where she shines, she sits. sits. Oh, Haley got it straight away. I have something to confess. Go on. You when I was one. when I no when My I was in primary, in primary school, yeah, I won a competition. Girl, Susie. No, yeah. no, I won a competition. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. did I. Do you, want, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to hear my competition yeah. winning piece? Tongue twisters. Go on. The tongue twister. Go. The long one. And I, I won for being the fastest to say it. Okay. Go on then. Go. <sighs> okay. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter was bitter. If I put a bit of butter in my... Oh, oh, hang on. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it'll make my batter bitter. But a bit of butter, butter that'll make the batter bitter. So she bought a bit of butter, butter, then the bit of butter, and she put it in the batter, and the batter was not bitter. So it was better Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. She sounds good. English. Okay. <laughs> that was about Betty Butter's butter. Do you, do you still that. remember your poem? Can you do it very quickly? Oh, the gruesome ghoul. The, yeah. The gruesome ghoul, the grisly ghoul, without the slightest noise, waits patiently beside the school to feast on girls and boys. It lunges fiercely through the air as they come out to play, then grabs a couple by the hair and drags them far away. It eats their stomachs and cracks their hearts and tears their flesh to shreds. Swallows their toes like toasted tarts and gobbles down their heads. Fingers, elbows, hands and knees, legs and arms and feet. It eats them with delight and ease for every part's a treat. And then the gruesome grizzly ghoul with nothing left to chew hurries to another school and waits perhaps for you. Wow. You should write kids' books. You know what? <laughs> I This is something I learnt when I was younger and I don't even know how I learnt it, but this is something that's always stuck with me. Mm. If you should insinuate that I should tolerate such bombastic impudence from a microscopic fool like you, I shall slap you across your canoptics and horizontalise your perpendicularity. Thank wow. you. Fantastic. I'm, cool. I'm, I'm flattered, but next time, don't build me Lay up down. so much. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too much foreplay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're listening to The Elegant Universe. But hang around. We have a very special guest. Willie. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to The Elegant Universe on 3WBC. Aries, it's time for your horoscope. So Aries, this month a robber will break into your house and steal nothing. It oh. turns out even petty criminals think you have nothing worth having. <laughs> oh. Susie, oh, no. we have a guest? We do. We'd like to welcome to the studio comedian Wayne Keenan. Welcome to my show. <laughs> you are one half of Two Brown Sugars. That's right. Trying um, to get it white. Not right. Right. Well, we made a mistake. It's supposed to be right, but it came out white. What? Freedom slip. Yeah, I am uh, performing with uh, Vincent Shaka. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So we've got a show on tonight at 7.45. At yep. the downstairs lounge of the Grand Mercure. Yep. Uh, and the address, that's at top mm. of Swanson sort of thing. Where is yeah, that? It's uh, 195 Swanson Street. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yep. Cool. And so have you and Vincent known each other long? When? D- how did this show come about? Well, we ran the show uh, at Sugar Laughs, the uh, comedy room that I was running in Turak. Yep. 
we had uh, lots of good-looking brown blokes and ladies <laughs> <laughs> performing in there one night. And then uh, Shaka w- came up to me and says, we should make this a kind of a, a bigger show and two people uh, in it. So yeah. the title Two Brown Sugars uh, came about. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, cool. did you have similar type of shows that you could just interlace together? No, actually the whole thing started when Shaka and I were performing one night uh, at a venue and then we were having a couple of drinks. And uh, I was just talking to, I had some family from Bali come over and we are talking about a niece and he thought I was talking Swahili. All oh, right. So there was a lot of the, uh, uh, the Balinese language and the Swahili, Swahili language is actually quite similar. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually a uh, language called the Austronesian language. The Aborigines speaks as well as well, the Hawaiian and the uh, Maoris. Right. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know any of that. All of these languages and I can't speak any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so. I speak bad English. Right, and so um, the downstairs lounge at 7.45 tonight, yes. so people can still get tickets at the door? Look, or? we've got some tickets to le- still left uh, uh, on trial booking, yep. and uh, I will give it to the listeners that the promo code is actually early birds. Uh, early okay. bird. I yeah, okay. I will get discount on that capital E on the early bird. Yeah, <laughs> cool. So you've heard it here. That's at the Red Violin, right? No, no, no. no. Oh, uh, this is at um, the, at the Grand McCure Hotel. The Grand yeah. McCure yeah. Hotel. Okay. The downstairs lounge. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 And so what else have you got coming up? Uh, you were saying before you do 100% Nuts? Yeah, we, I've got uh, shows on at the sub club also called 100% Nuts. It's a showcase of uh, comedians, uh, up and comers. Some of them have become very, very good. Yep. So we we're actually uh, doing uh, very well and we're packing the seats. We, it's a 100 uh, seat uh, theatre. Yep. We've sold out every night except for the first night. Wow. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. So, That's good. Uh, Damien Snell and I run a uh, room. So after yep. I finish Brown Sugar, I run across there just to see <laughs> how things are going. <laughs> so it's been hectic a uh, uh, few days since the 25th of March. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'm sensing a bit of a, th- a food theme here. We've got brown sugar. We've got nuts. Mm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, well. I'm, I'm wondering what's next. Like, what else can we add to the table here? Oh, well, this is all the food I've come up yeah. with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like a Bananas. I feel like bananas could work their way into comedy. Yeah, a lot too bananas. Uh, yeah. In the pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So, how many comedy festivals have you done? Is this the first? This or? is my very first one, but with 100% nuts, this is our fourth one. Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so, you've been doing it for quite some time. No, I haven't. I actually did a comedy course with Robert Grayson. Okay. And okay. Then I actually went to the course to uh, kind of, if there was uh, finding w- ways to see if meetings can last only 15 minutes instead of the three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, Robert says to me, I said, look, uh, what would you like to take away from this? I said, look, go into a meeting, walk out of the meeting and within 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So in that, uh, part of the comedy writing was just to kind of choose all the chunky words and, then yep. and e- deliver a lot of message with just within few words. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what comedy is. So I g- married the two things together. Yeah. yeah. I love my job and I love comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And so how long, when did you get into it? Were you uh, like young, a teenager or was no, it later? No, no, oh, only two years ago. So okay. Wow. wow. This is my third year in comedy. Yeah. Yeah, but I've been a uh, construction engineer now for... 35 years. Yep, yep. Yeah. Had to sort of take that road because the parents said so or? <laughs> no, not really. It just uh, uh, it happens because I got bored in high school. Yep. At St. Uh, at St. John's College, and then uh, uh, I said to my stepdad at the time, I said, I want to leave school. But at that time, they had a, uh, a, a scholarship yep. at the Catholic University of Northern Territory. Yep. So I took the, uh, the electrical engineering there, and yep. I graduated from CUNT with honours. Wow, yeah, yeah, right. cool. that's great. And so what can people expect if they come to see your show? Well, they will see all the references to uh, Bali, the language, the, the similar cultures between uh, Kenyan culture and Balinese culture. Yep. Okay. And uh, the, uh, basically, it's all to do with the language. Even some of the music is very much the same. It's a pentonic scale. Yep. Mm. So stuff like that is quite similar. Oh, so there's yeah. music and... Well, we, we don't do the music side, but we're mo- but, uh, straight stand-up. Yep. But 
That's a lot of uh, uh, stuff that is so common. So uh, we've co uh, coined a term called the we're the Afro-Nation because it's uh, an African-Indonesian thing all combined together. Yeah, yeah. right. Cool. That's great. And so do you have any websites or web pages or Facebook pages? YouTube, people, YouTube even. YouTube yeah, so I'll, uh, there's YouTube uh, sites for us as well. Uh, just a, a, a trailer of our show. Yeah. Okay. Of me and uh, uh, Shaka doing stand-up uh, at various places. Yeah. yeah. So, so if we search Two Brown Sugars on YouTube, will that come up? Yeah, it will. It will come up. Great. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, stay with us and we'll be back with Wayne Keenan and more after this break. Because you know I'm all about that space. This is Frank Hamster, resident conspiracy theory expert for the Elegant Universe radio show. Listen in, 4 p.m. till 6, Fridays, 94.1 FM. It's all a conspiracy. About that space. Welcome back. You're listening to 94.1 FM. This is the Elegant Universe. It is, and we're here with a very special guest, Wayne Keenan, who Woo! is half of yeah. Two Brown Sugars. Yep. And I feel like it's a one-night stand because you just got here and now you've got to leave already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to rush to the city to do some spruiking. Do some spruiking ah. for tonight's show, mm. which is for anyone out there listening, it's at the Granby Cure Hotel, which mm -hmm. is 195, 195 yeah. Swanston Street in yeah. the city. Uh, get amongst the uh, uh, Melbourne Comedy Festival people. Get out there. See yep. two tons brown of fun. sugars. Tons of fun. Lots of laughs tonight for you. And so we were talking about 100% nuts. That's yep. right. And you still run that. Is that every week? That's on uh, every uh, Sunday to Thursday. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's a lot. So, and where is that? Where can people find that? It, uh, it's, the address is actually 33 Elizabeth Street. Okay. But it's actually easier to just uh, go head towards the corner of Elizabeth Street. Yep. And Flinders Lane. There's a Flinders Court in there. Just go down that way. We've got the whole thing chalked out. And just follow <laughs> it. It takes you to on an underground uh, uh, labyrinth. And wow. And uh, it's a 120-seat uh, theatre. Wow, real hidden and treasure. Yeah. Cool. And so who who would I see if I came there? Is this just a mixture of different comedians every night? or We've got different show every night. Oh, so great. We're, cool. we're, we're on a format where we've got uh, 12 comics and one headliner. Yep. So... Uh, the, uh, everybody gets six minutes each, and then the headliner gets 20. Okay, cool. so great. And what time does that start? It starts at uh, 7.30. Okay, yeah. and that's running until next week? Right up to oh, the right 19th. Up, uh, right up to the April, 19th? yes. Fantastic. And then what have you got coming up after that for the rest of the year? I've got uh, I also produce uh, uh, another room called New Beer Comics. Yeah. Which is at uh, the corner of Elizabeth Street and Little Lonsdale Street. Okay. So that's uh, on... Uh, once a month, every Thursdays. Yeah. The next show is actually on the seventh uh, of May. Okay. Yeah. You've got your fingers in a lot of pies. Yes, <laughs> I know. Look, I, oh, I haven't watched TV in a long time, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been writing and I've been producing and all that stuff. Yeah. That's okay. TV kills brain cells anyway. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I've read somewhere that for every hour of TV you watch, you cut your life down by twenty-two minutes. I'd be dead then. Because of right. that's what it'd be. Because that's of how you're sitting down, just like not moving at all for an yeah. hour and really bad posture, and that's that's frightening. No, it's seriously. I'm I'd thinking be dead. about how much yeah. TV I've already watched in my lifetime, yeah. and <laughs> I'm scared. I'm about to die. Yeah. <laughs> I did a survey on the Herald Sun uh, yeah, yeah. to see how old you will uh, live to. Yeah, yep. mm. I'm going to live till 126 years old. Wow. wow! That's from not watching TV. Wow. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Something wrong with the formula there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, where's Vincent? Where's Vincent at the moment? Vincent is already spruiking on uh, at Good the on town you, hall. Yeah, so we've, we've divided our task into two. So I'll yep. do the right. Oh, so yeah. we know who's working. <laughs> 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 Teamwork, I yeah, like so it. We're, yeah, we're working as a team. Yeah. Oh, good one. Okay, so for everyone out there listening, mm -hmm. go to uh, Two Brown Sugars tonight at. Uh, downstairs lounge at the Grand Mercure Hotel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 195 Swanston Street in the city. And if you do mention, what's Curly. the code word? Early birds. Early, Early birds, birds with the capital Happy. Yeah. yeah, on the try booking website. <laughs> yeah. try booking a discount website. on the tickets. Or, yeah, that's right. or if uh, just kind of stop me uh, while I'm spruiking in there, grab a flyer, go into the hotel and go mm -hmm. downstairs. 
and yep. you only pay sixteen dollars. Nice. Wow. It's a nice okay. intimate show. So there's it's a sixty seater, so yeah. you'll get uh, a lot of uh, attention if you do go and watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to a break, but before we do, let's have a horoscope. Okay, so Taurus, this month you will finally learn how to lock pick and successfully break into a house. Only to discover the owner of the house has nothing except a yoga mat and a milk crate. You urinate in their kettle as revenge. Oh. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Yeah, it's pretty clear. I ain't commercial crew. But hey, this is Haley, your pseudo psychic like from the elegant universe. Make sure you tune in to 94.1 FM on Fridays from 4 to 6. All the right places. I see Orion crew working that ship outside. Welcome back to the Elegant Universe. We're in the studio. Comedy Festival is running hot. We've got all kinds of people in here from all over the place. Mm. They're coming in. We just had Wayne, so make sure you catch Two Brown Sugars. Two Brown yes. Sugars at, at the Downstairs Lounge at the Grand Mercure Hotel, 195 Swanston Street at 745 tonight. Nice. That sounds good. If I had, you know, he's in the studio, did you girls get a free ticket? Oh, no. Did, no, did we? No, no. no, not a thing. We no. only got a discount. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely. Is he going to go? Okay. Hey? You, you're not going to go anyway, so stop your complaining. Yeah, but it's, seven it's, girls it's not whether you go or not, it's the principle yeah. of, of helping the other offer. people Well, in the did, did we get free tickets to your show last no. week? Did. You we did, did yeah, you but did. you didn't come. Did no, did. it was going to be $40. <laughs> 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 well, that wasn't our fault. Speaking, speaking of knowing <laughs> the past, the present, and the future, yeah. let's have a horoscope. Okay, so Gemini, this month your favourite instant coffee will be superseded. All of the other brands taste like bin juice. Ooh. You start buying coffee every day and can no longer afford your electricity bill. Sounds about right. Okay. <laughs> Life is tough sometimes. When you, when I was a kid, yeah. one of my favourite stories was Peter Pan. My yeah. sisters were into Snow White. Yes, and I'm about to break their hearts because I have a couple of conspiracy theories about Snow White that completely ruined childhood. Okay. And there's a bunch of kids actually listening to this right now. Well, yes. Santa Claus isn't real either. Ooh. Yep. So, <laughs> there is two. <laughs> okay. In 1937, Disney made Snow White and yep. the Seven Draw- Dwarves as yep. their first animated movie. Yes. It's about cocaine. Ooh. No. Come yes. on. No, Don't be silly. It's actually, no. a, it's actually about a lot of drugs. Whatever. But go on. Okay. Go so, on. first, most obvious point. Yeah. Snow, Snow White. White. Is slang for cocaine, all right? Because uh-huh. it's, it's white, you know. Yep. Street, no, it's because her skin terms. is fair as snow. Explain the hair, <laughs> well, then. Not really. She Explain has the hair. Black yeah, exactly. as raven. She has dark hair. She yeah. wears blue and red. Like, yes. why is the snow the defining feature of her? Because yeah, her, why not call her, her red and blue as white? Why as not snow? call her yes. raven? Yeah. No, she had to call us. Hey, go on. Okay. What other evidence do you have? <laughs> the second piece of evidence go is on. the seven dwarves. Yeah. Being the seven. Stages of cocaine usage. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Okay. I've only ever experienced one. No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, mm. first off, yep. happy. Yeah. When you yep. start your yep. euphoric state. Tick. Start. Tick. <laughs> <laughs> Second dwarf. Sneezy, which apparently I wouldn't Sneezy. know. Yeah, because you, you know, not a, you no, know your nasal no. passage collapses with use. That's, there we are. With overuse. With overuse. That is not even Not over with any use. My nose anyway. drizzles, but it doesn't oh. sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, users of cocaine end up sneezing all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah just do. Apparently. Sleepy Allegedly. is another dwarf. <laughs> Sleepy, yeah, yeah. down Doors. a stage, you know, yeah. oh, whatever. Okay. Bashful <laughs> is the dwarf that everyone always forgets because it, it's a weird word. Yeah. But it's basically referring to the withdrawal after the high when you feel like getting like isolated and Everyone's a little bit depressed. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> now, another really obvious dwarf yeah. is Dopey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Dopey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sixth dwarf is Grumpy, mm-hmm. yeah. as you become after... After a long time on a cocaine high, apparently. And, I wouldn't know. And let me <laughs> guess, Doc is their pusher. <laughs> He's the guy who mixes it theories. up in the lab. There are two theories. One <laughs> is that Doc is the pusher. And oh, right, the other okay. is that you need a doctor afterwards. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've, this Third, is stretching the conspiracy theory, <laughs> no. but let's go. What Third else? Third piece of evidence yeah. is that the seven dwarves work... In a diamond mine. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Getting their oh, cracked no. diamonds and processing them into cocaine. You're totally Therefore, forgetting that Disney ripped this off. 
from a story yeah. by mm. Hans Christian Andersen. That's right. Although who didn't know what cocaine was. But exactly. anyway, go uh, on. Yeah, of course Hans Christian yeah. Andersen had no idea what cocaine was. But I guess <laughs> um, like the ideas of like how you present Snow White with the dark hair despite being right. Snow White yeah. and so yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of leads to Disney what? suggesting the drug usage. And apparently there are a lot of Disney movies with such drug references, which maybe I'll detail in later shows. Yeah. yeah. Did you also know there's a Mickey Mouse in every Disney movie? Yes. Yes, mm. the part of, people spend the half image. their lives trying to find the hidden Mickey Mouse really? inside yeah. all the Disney movies. I don't know why That's you'd spend great. half your life doing that when you can just look up the videos on YouTube and people have already yeah. done it for you. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's like find half their lives. <laughs> such find a Waldo. Joy. <laughs> find, find Waldo. Okay, you're listening to the Elegant Universe. When we come back, special surprise. We'll take it from there. We've got Wilfredo on the show, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's really good. We'll be back after this. Going far. This is Susie J, and you can catch me and the team on Fridays from 4 to 6. Spacecraft is propulsion from the bottom to the top. Hey, the work is so hard, don't you love it? Welcome back to the Elegant Universe on 94.1 FM. It's time for another horoscope. Cancer. This month, you will create a Twitter account. You import all of your contacts, but no one follows you back. Could it be all of your knock-knock joke tweets? Yes, it could <laughs> possibly be. <laughs> Susie. When I was younger, my auntie... <laughs> <laughs> what? Shane, I don't think you're the one that can laugh at that. I, that's why I'm laughing <laughs> at yeah, it. Right. Yeah. You're about my age, aren't you? We're, we're not that far apart, are we, Susie? Oh, Ooh, Shane. How old are you, Susie? <laughs> Oh, one week it's about the size of my butt. Another <laughs> week it's about, it's about what I drink. <laughs> now it's about my age. You know what? I'm just going to move forward with the story. All right, you do that. You go to He's the story. Otherwise, I'm going go to, to the move news. forward to you. Okay, so my auntie, and this is no word of a lie, yeah. went to the doctors because she couldn't hear properly. Mm-hmm. Ah. Do you know what was what the problem was? I'm, we, I'm scared. Yeah, go on. Selective hearing? A cockroach had laid eggs in her ear <gasps> while she was sleeping. How does that happen? I don't know, but that got me thinking. Right. Like, what other things have been found in human beings around the world, right? Yeah, okay. So, in China, there was a schoolboy who was walking home from school. He was thirsty and he saw a bucket of water. So, he drank it. As you do. As you do. A bucket bucket of water water sitting on the side of the road. In China, yeah. In Mm. China. (laughs) And Mm. uh, at first, his mum thought that he had a cold because he started getting a bit sick. Mm -hmm. And then he got taken to the doctors and Mm -hmm. they ended up doing an x-ray. And do you know what was in there? We got on. A leech. Inside. A leech was in his throat. That's gross. In South Korea, a 63-year-old woman... Ate a partially cooked squid. As you do. Oh, okay. I know the story. She bit into, you know, part of this delicious dish, which delicious. still had its organ intact. Mm-hmm. And she felt a pricking and foreign body sensation in her mouth. So she spat it out, okay? Mm. But she was too late. Pods of squid semen <gasps> had already shot into her mouth, impregnating the mucous membranes of her tongue. <gasps> What? Cheek yeah. and gum. A load no. Of gum. no, there's photos of the, like the surgery and everything. So Doctors later you, You're used. saying cross species impregnation is possible? No, no, no. <laughs> well, hang on. Oh. Hasn't there been a, yeah. a male pregnancy before? Why could you not believe? What do you mean? That was a female. It couldn't be a female. What do you mean? What? What? Do you mean? Hang on. Wait, what uh, hang on, what's going on now? <laughs> Who is this? We we really we okay. need to step up our security yeah, in here. We, it's either Wilfredo or a homeless guy has wandered into the studio. What do you mean homeless guy? <laughs> well, this is I, the mucus you know, membrane. I'm a little bit on the whiffy side. It's still, but that's because I was awake all night. I'm a little drinky winky. The expert. <laughs> Why not? Why uh, not? I, I didn't get much sleep. I had a happy meal around four o'clock this morning. Really? I'm so happy. <laughs> Pop back up to say hello again about 5.30. <laughs> I'm a little bit on the whippy side, but I'm here, which is what matters. Yeah. Um, can I take your seat? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wilfredo. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the studio, Wilfredo. Thank you so much, Thank sweetie. Thank you so much for dressing up. Get your hand off my <laughs> knees, sweetie. <laughs> You've got... 
two safety pins I in your shirt. Two that's safety pins. That's, if that's, I can't that's well myself, done. Why can I not hear myself? Oh, it's probably not plugged in. I'm yeah. I, I'm always plugged I, in. I just don't wear them. <laughs> just don't wear them. Yeah, we're a bit too cool for the headphones <laughs> around here. How are we all? Well, pretty, so it's, pretty a nice, it's a nice feeling, I guess. That's better. I can hear myself now. And who wouldn't want to hear me? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a nice feeling. The minute I just burst through that door. You know what I felt, girls? What? I felt a special ambience. I felt it nice. It's like I'm coming to your living room. It's <laughs> like I've entered your home <laughs> as an uninvited guest. In a sense, I feel like Santa. I feel like Father <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> bringing joy to you on this special day. And what day of the week is it? It's, it's a Friday. Friday. How are you, girls? I like <laughs> it when you both speak in unison to me. It's <laughs> 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 happened a few times It today, has happened actually. today. We're getting more and more in sync. <laughs> uh, <did> you, <laughs> you, you, <you're laughs> what is it? You're, you're fine? Yeah, I'm fine. You're, I you're swallowed okay? it. I swallowed it. No oh. problem. <laughs> Good. Well, Not maybe you just swallowed something living. <laughs> and I'm enjoying your horoscopes. I'm a Virgo. You're a Virgo. Oh, I was born on September the 21st. That's coming up soon. Oh, Very okay. soon. You'll, you'll find out what's happening this what month. What's going on for me in my Ooh, day? I'll, I'll tell you later. What's your star sign, sweetie? I'm a Cancerian. Oh, Cancerian. Mm. June. Uh, July. 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 Start you, July. Gemini. Oh, well, of course. You're a woman of many layers. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're not, just, you're not just a voice on the radio. You're a multi-talented young lady. Is that true? <laughs> Singer, dancer. You've been through, you've had many lives. I have had many <laughs> lives. And I think you and I have got some past life association. Really? Mm. Perhaps we're married in a former life. I don't know. My manager. We were married. In a oh, married. Life, I don't know. I knew and I hated you for some reason. The universe has chosen this moment to bring us back together. Oh, okay. And connect us. How are we, listeners? My name is Wilfredo Paco Jose Rodriguez Fernandez. I'm over here from Spain, directly to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, making my show every night at 9.45 at, cool. at the Red Violin. Ooh. Which is cool because it's a cool show. Yeah. And it's just me. The critics say there's nothing more in this show but an audience. And a genius in an armchair talking about his life and his time. So <laughs> you're at the, the Red Violin with the two bearded ladies. Two bearded ladies are in the show before me. Their show starts at 8.30. Uh, and are and you having an affair with either of these bearded mm, ladies? No, look, sweetie. Hey, hey, you've been <laughs> cheating on me since we got I'm, divorced? I'm married to my career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully committed to my career. You could probably do better than some bearded ladies anyway, couldn't you? Julia Gillard has been on the phone to me. Oh. Right. Actually, oh, wow. I've read something about some affairs you had. had. Victoria bored Beckham. With Fredo. She's bored. Well, uh, Julia Gillard mm. is bored, this post office period, banging your head against. I'll tell you a little secret about <laughs> Julia Gillard, mm -hmm. listeners. Uh, she lights the toilet seat up, not down. Oh, yeah. that's that's a bit yeah. weird. Snippet for you. We had someone like that <laughs> Which ruling way our she country. Which roll her toilet paper? Is it over the top or is it under? I never give away that information. <laughs> <laughs> I never give it away. But it's she doesn't. She's a bit. She's quite frugal, as you'd expect yeah. from a former prime minister. She doesn't. She doesn't go. She doesn't spend too much on the toilet paper. Mm -hmm. It's like tracing paper. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit rough on some parts of the body. That's right. Anyway, why are we why are we talking about Julia? I don't know. You brought her up when there's so many topics to be talking about. You're trying like to make me jealous. Women eating squid. Mm. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so, are you on at the Red Violin tonight, Wilfredo? I'm on at the Red Violin tonight and tomorrow. And yes. Then I'm back there again Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I I don't know what I I was in Adelaide. Yep. For uh, uh, one month for the Adelaide Fringe. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Melbourne is exactly like Adelaide. Don't say that. But with more culture, more yes. coffee, and the traffic lights change from time to time. <laughs> but it's a very friendly city. Adelaide is a friendly, friendly city. But it's good to be here in Melbourne. You know why? Because it's, it's a multicultural city. Yes. Mm. And it feels alive. Yes. You know, when I walk down Swanston Street... Heads start to turn, you know. Oh, oh I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm 100% raw natural talent. Yes. From the tip of my toes to the top of my <laughs> head. Packaged we, we up a castle <laughs> with nothing but love and success. Stitched together with raw human sexuality. And, and safety, safety pins. <laughs> yeah. We are reading each other's minds today. We're on it. We're on it. Maybe we should take a break and uh, try and pull ourselves together, Haley, <laughs> with Wilfredo sitting next to us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break on The Elegant Universe.
Well, listeners, welcome back to White Horse Burundara Radio in the Parallel Universe show, whatever it's called. <laughs> You're listening online on digital and on FM, 94.1 FM, 3WBC. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Australia. My name is Wilfredo. I'm a lover, I'm a thinker, I'm a poet, I'm a drinker, and I'm with you right now through until midnight on <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to welcome all my guests. We've got David Talk, who's just coming. Hello, to hello, Will Friday. How are you? Wonderful comedian, just Thank you very a much. wonderful, Thank you. wonderful review in the Herald Sun. We did a beautiful <laughs> review in the Herald Sun. It was amazing. A five star review with a few stars missing from that review. Five stars from me every time. Yeah, I know. I they know. ran Thank out you. of ink. They ran that out was of all. I think they ran out of patience, is what they ran out of. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a shambolic test of patience. For yeah, it's show. shambolic test I'd of patience. I'd love to have they, that copy on they my said, poster. They said, "It's a learning experience." No, no, it was. Uh, we no, it wasn't a learning experience. It was a horrific experience. However, <laughs> <laughs> we we did. We've come back from it. We've, we're happy now. Um, because you, uh, I always say that we, as artists, yes. As comedians, Susie underestimate me with her eyes. I know. As an artist, <laughs> when we have a critic come and see the show, a reviewer, if they don't get it, they don't get it. Who and let's see, they don't understand you know, what it is that we. One person's opinion. Ah, ah, wait. Sorry. Let me finish what I'm saying. Ooh. Very, very difficult for me to think in one language and come out. You of always my mouth. seem to be someone's bitch, Dave Talks. Last week. Oh, <laughs> no, David. Last week you were Sean Bedlam. David, oh, this week it's no. David is nobody's bitch. He's his own man, David Tark. I've seen him in so many different... And we've got an unexpected visitor coming into the room here. I like your fringe. Yes. If, if only the listeners could look in. Are we going out? Are we streaming anywhere? I know no. We can. no. Oh, it's I know. It's such a shame that people can't... We're all of us, all five of us sitting here in the studio. All she five of us. <laughs> I hope, there's a, I hope there's a delay on that. Can we censor that? No. Because that's not what I said. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said there's five of us sitting here in the studio together. <laughs> and all of us a feast for the eyes. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> listeners. You're listening to 3WBC 94.1. The FM. Elegant Universe. The Elegant Universe the radio show. Hey, Wilfredo, have you ever been in jail? Are you a naughty boy? I am a naughty boy, sweetie, but I'm, I'm a man of peace and harmony. I'm a naughty boy, but I'm on a quest for the truth constantly. Uh-huh. I'm a naughty, naughty boy, but I'm full of heart. Yeah, no, I've never been in prison. I've been spanked a couple of times. <laughs> but I've never been sent to any kind of state sponsor. You've done a lot of travelling, though, haven't you? What? I've done a lot of travelling, sweetie. Broken many hearts? I don't know. Probably. Probably I've, I've broken hearts. Probably with my voice. You should hear me sing, sweetie. I think with you his teeth. Hear me sing I think David of, wanted to hear you sing, yeah? David hears me sing every night and he can't get enough of it. Because <laughs> his show is before mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so his so show is 8.30. It's called Two Bearded Ladies mm. with Sean Bedlam. Yeah. That's a wonderful, wonderful show. No matter what the Murdoch press say, it's a wonderful <laughs> show. And we can never be held responsible as artists for the lack of people's taste, other mm. people's taste. What's the matter? It's the audience that we love. They come the audience. That, that we do love the audience. Night. They... They come and they, they, they share the love. I mean, that's the thing about our show is we teach them how to <laughs> to be in love with nice. their humanity. That's, that's, it. that's the truth. We solve the world's problems. We do, show. every night. Every night in an hour show, which is unusual yeah. and, and quite compact. But people are able to have their... Have you got any problems, Susie, that you need solved right now? That I can solve for you. Well, I yes, th- I can get you two together. So there you are. <laughs> See what's happened here? <laughs> I can solve that problem you, you for just, you. You can read me. I now. know. Just, you didn't you even need to speak. running into each other and you just know and me. And that's now. because you were looking straight past me into <laughs> Wilfredo's eyes. Exactly. Like last week, I didn't <laughs> like even I have to look past here. you. I just looked straight into Sean's eyes. <laughs> and you knew. I feel I mean. a little. Unloved, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Why being unloved? Why? Well, I think there's a lot of love Here in this room. Here we go. Issues time for Talky again. <laughs> they usually have it about 2 really? o'clock in the morning at the Exmouth Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Tears start to fall. <laughs> But he's a happily married man. I am. My I am God, indeed. he's got his wife because she keeps him absolutely sane. She's a scientist. This is why I don't he's flirt with you. I know. He's you know? Because I'm married. I'm doing it mm. good. So my, my beautiful and he's wife. married to a scientist. Yes. Did you know that? No, I didn't he's know He's married that. to a scientist and he goes home, he drives home. Of course, he's underneath the limit, not over it. When he drives home, <laughs> way to get home and stroke his chihuahua. That's What's it. the dog? It's a Maltese terrier. Maltese terrier. Cross with a shih tzu. Oh. He's a very cross shih tzu. He's a very lovely dog. Though. He's beautiful. Um, he's 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 really lovely. You know, like he he dances for me when I get home. He does a little show. 
Just to make me feel better about my day. <laughs> more because you want. <laughs> you just want anything else. Something like that. I, if I was a character, like a, if I was a dog, if I was a cat, I think I'm more like a cat than a dog. I'm like a tomcat. <laughs> I am. I'm like a typical tomcat, Susie, because I'm asleep all day and awake all night, like any self-respecting tomcat should be. All I need in life is an affectionate hand from time to time. Uh huh. A saucer of milk. <laughs> bit of stroking. <laughs> bit of stroking. Yeah. You just tap a spoon on the tin, sweetie, and I'll come running. No problem. <laughs> We've already covered star signs in this show. Yes. I like the mm. way we flesh out the show by reading horoscopes. <laughs> but I wonder what your everyone's Chinese animal is. What's your Chinese animal, Susie? I don't know. What What year were you born, sweet pea? I was born in 1983. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was born in the year of the rooster. So I'm oh, observant and I'm sharp, very sharp. Right. You know? And when a, lo- when a rooster takes a lover, it goes directly for the heart. And of course you wouldn't know it, but Tulki here, he's a snake. He puffs up and he's charming and then he slithers off. <laughs> 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 and Frank, 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 he's the producer of this show, also a wonderful, wonderful comedian. Frank Hamster was born actually mm. in the year of the hamster. Oh. So he's just you know, going <laughs> round and round in circles. <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing. Why are we laughing? Why are we laughing? What does it mean? Tell us, <laughs> tell me. What does it mean? It's human, the sound of laughter. It's, it's just the joy of the heart. We're the like heart doctors. exploding with, with love. We're like doctors. The comedian is like, he's like a doctor. No, he's no, right. He's right. He's right. Because we take people and we, we, we give them our own type of medicine and we brighten up their lives. We do something a doctor mm. cannot do or a surgeon this cannot is true. do. The greatest medicine in the world we prescribe and I'm uh. describing it every night of the red violin yes. at 9.45. Susie, I want you to come to my show. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I want you to enjoy it. And I sing many, many songs from all my albums. Are you going to sing a song for us later here uh, today? Right. Who knows? Who what knows? might happen? My album, of course, is on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think you can download it also from the Spotify. It's called The Wonderful World of Wilfredo. Seven magnificent songs. Really fantastic. All album. right. Well, and I have, I, I have not quite finished. <laughs> I'm releasing another album later this year, live, recorded live in Petaluma, California. Cool. A fantastic producer I had for that album called Chris Vibert. He has a wonderful uh, band with uh, uh, Aliers called Team Venus. Anyway, I must not plug other artists. But <laughs> that album is going to be released later this year with Fredo Live in California. Probably going to be released about the same time as Rolf Harris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll be right back, back after this Don't break. Don't go away, sweeties. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Elegant Universe on 3WBC. Leo, it's time for your horoscope. Woo! So, Leo, this month you will add a supercharger to the engine of your car. Now you can't drive anywhere without the police pulling you over for a routine check. Okay, that one's for you. Anyway. Virgo? Is he, is he a Leo? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, Sagittarius, you're a Sag. But, but I believe you're a Virgo, aren't you? I am a Virgo, but I've got a Leo rising, sweetie. <laughs> and astrologists will tell you that the Leo is the king of the jungle. <laughs> if, if, if you're a successful performer as I am, singer, poet, uh, comedian, everything, basically. Everything. <laughs> but it's, the Leo is the, my performer side. Oh. My, yeah, my Leo rising. But and, I am a Virgo. I was born on September the 21st. And so Virgo is your, your personal side. Okay, let's hear what, <laughs> <I've got laughs> what you've got for April. Okay, so this month, Virgo, yeah. you'll gather some acorns, dig a hole under a large oak tree, and hibernate for the winter. Oh, like I was born in the year of the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me tell you something, sense. Virgo. Nobody will even notice that you're gone. Oh, oh I find that very, very difficult to Straight believe. Once you, once, once you've met me, impossible to forget me. Oh, absolutely, Isn't it Frankie. I, I agree. I agree, Wilfredo. It's Thank great, you. great to have you back in Melbourne. It's fantastic that you could make it out here to Box Hill as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so happy to be here, I can't tell you. Oh, you, you look. I have needed to get out of that shitty centre for, for a little <laughs> while. <and laughs> oh, I understand I that. I finally done it. Yeah. They've dragged me away from the boring masses. Mm. And it's fantastic to have you here. And and the ladies of the studio are, are absolutely swooning mm-hmm. uh, as we speak. Susie, I seduced her within seconds. I know, I know. I've I've never seen Susie left speechless by any of our guests, but this is happening today, and I'm I'm totally wrapped. 
I she, just she's... don't know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> my, my well, look face, into my his face, eyes. My face. Yeah, you could start with so, his eyes and I'm work a... down but from there. It's hard to see through all these, like... You know, I feel like we're in jail or something. I feel like what? I've I feel like I've been objectified for far too long <laughs> by <laughs> members of the opposite sex. Not only members of the opposite sex, some men too. I'm a gay icon in the BLT community. See, you've been pretty quiet over there too, Me? Peter. I reckon you're a little bit moved by little. Oh, well, absolutely. Who wouldn't be? Hey? Like, who think, wouldn't be? I think. I think. God, less is more for me well, too about how I am and what how you're feeling about me, really. But you. Yeah, Men come and see my show mm. because they 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 watch and they learn. When I was a small boy, uh, I was known as El Nino de Granada, which means the child. <laughs> or the boy from Granada was a child star. I could sing before I could speak. And I could dance. Like Susie, I was a dancer. <laughs> I could dance before I could walk. And when I was a little boy, I would sometimes go missing. Oh, uh, Don't look at the clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would was, was go missing sometimes. And more and my family would get together and they'd say they'd play a little game called Where's Wilfredo? Aww. And they would listen for the sound of applause and laughter. Mm -hmm. And they'd follow it very carefully. And whatever, of course, the sound was coming around, whether I was stood on the bar or stood on a park bench or in the, ch on the, ch the pews in the church, they would always find me, and I would always have a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> when I was older, I'd also go missing. Once I became an adult, with it, we used to play a game called Follow That Talent. <laughs> 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 I don't know why that's funny, Frank. It's funny, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, follow that it's, talent. it's very amusing to me, but it's more amusing just to watch Susie try and undress you with her eyes. This is what, what I'm really enjoying. <laughs> I don't think I'm and, doing and that. And she hasn't even had a chance it. to look at your license plate yet. I mean, we haven't seen the well toned, strong. Uh, glutinous Maximus that you seem to project to your audience on stage. Frankie, if you go back to S Susie for a minute, you don't, <laughs> you don't need to vocalise it. If there's a woman attracted to a man in a room, you don't have to point it out. The listeners will feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in the room, we all feel it. I think, you know, Susie, you, I think you're in season. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably what's going on. Are you a married woman, a single woman? <laughs> she <doesn't laughs> She's like me. She doesn't want to lose her fan base. She <laughs> likes to leave something to the imagination. And we we'll leave this now to the imagination, whatever's going on between me and Susie. Frank, you had a question about my masculinity uh, on uh, stage. No, just the, the way you present yourself on stage. Well, is, so is tell me, I can't see how I present myself. When I'm on stage, I'm on stage. I'm well, in the, for I'm me, in the present I moment. Mean, uh, I'm not in the past. I'm not in the future. I'm right there, right now, entertaining the Well, masses. I mean, just remove the fact that I, I may or may not be com a comedian. If When I'm looking at you on stage as a punter, I, I feel that you are the type of man that I want to be like. Like, that is a man's man. You you this is you so, just this is so you capture you capture. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you know how many times do I have to hear this? Yes, yeah, I'm sure. You I'm would sure, because it's the way you work, people, and the way women cannot take their eyes off you for a second. It's no, something geez. I've always wanted, yep. and you seem to do it, making no effort. Yeah, but again, we go back to my being objectified. I'm so much more than just. He's not a piece of meat. <laughs> what about <laughs> you? You've seen me on stage at the Expo. I, I yeah, have, yeah. I have, twice, Which this is, week. It's not exactly, for example, the London Palladium. It no. certainly is horror. not. It is certainly is not. The it's, word dive springs to mind. Yeah, but, but I like dives. Yeah. When I go to America and I tour the United States, I like to, f I always sniff out, Susie, the nearest dive bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not interested in members' clubs. Mm. or anything. I like places where people are real, you know. Mm. I like places where your, the soles of your feet are sticking to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> and the export is just this kind of place. I like it Australians. Is, yes, yes. Australians have this gift of, uh, it's not really a gift, it's more of a cultural thing, mm. about being direct. Yes. You know, I love places where people can really tell you what they think without packaging everything up. That's something, unfortunately, the English well, are, are, are expert at packaging. Mm -hmm. They can never say anything. Spe speaking of direct. So a little, speaking sorry. of England, just say good morning to them. If we can, a few of my yes, fans yes. in the United Kingdom and in Spain, Sweden, they'll all be tuning in now and listening, yes. clutching their hot water bottles, squeezing their tea bags, <laughs> po poaching their eggs. Hello, good morning to all my fans in, in the United Kingdom and across yep. Europe. And, of course, in New York, of course, I'm oh, just cool. about going to bed in New York. Yes, yes, yep. in yep. New York. I think it's 2 two a.m., something like that, 3 a.m., but right, I know thanks. there is a listener in Washington, oh. D.C. right now listening oh. in. Well, that's it, same, mm. East Coast mm. time. 
Mia Farrow will be in her slippers and dressing gown now. <laughs> she certainly will Tongue be. Tongue between teeth, wondering what to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Mia. Hello, Mia. Morning. Evening. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you've got a hole in your panties. I do. I, oh, <laughs> Holy I do. I'm not going to. I do. To I think I, I, might, I may have been sporting something extra there. Uh, Susie, look, Wilfredo was saying about Australians are direct. You've said nothing direct to Wilfredo so far. You normally give hard hitting, hard question interviews. You haven't asked any of the hard questions. Ask me something controversial, sweetie. Uh, I, I can't talk. Why? How do you feel, Wilfredo? I about know, about yeah. one one direction breaking up. Because ah, obviously they're your most hardcore, you know, opponents. They're, because all I the women and not, all. I am in a category in a genre all of my own. <laughs> I don't need one direction. There's only one direction I go and that's up. There's only one. I know that is not we don't share a market. No? The only difference really between myself and one direction one fundamental difference between me and one direction is is they have no talent at all, and I've got plenty. Oh, well, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Now, no, I, mean, I'm not, I don't mime in my shows. I don't have to. I'm not a marketable commodity in the same ways as they are. But having said that, they're not here plugging their show at the Red Violin. Exactly. That's this right. is true. Now, Hayley before <laughs> was talking about her conspiracy theories. I've, I've got to ask you, do you have, Will Frodo, any conspiracy theories? Well... We we'll, we'll let him think about it. We'll no, go to I a did, quick break. Uh, what, can we talk about airlines, planes, yeah, yeah, let's planes go. going missing? Let's go. Yes, we can. Presidents getting assassinated. Yeah, yes, we yeah, can. Whatever you want. We'll let princesses in Paris car crashes. Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah, we can do all that, but we'll do that after the break. Let's go to a break. Wonderful. Welcome back to the Elegant Universe on 3WBC. Leo, it's time for your horoscope. Woo! So, Leo, this month you will add a supercharger to the engine of your car. Now you can't drive anywhere without the police pulling you over for a routine check. Okay, that one was for you. Anyway. Virgo? Is he, is he a Leo? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, Sag, you have a Sag. But, but I believe you're a Virgo, aren't you, I Alfredo? I am a Virgo, but I've got a Leo rising, sweetie. <laughs> and astrologists will tell you that the Leo is the king of the jungle. <laughs> if you're a successful performer as I am, singer, poet, uh, comedian, everything, basically. Everything. <laughs> but it's, the Leo is the, my performer side. Ah. My, yeah, my Leo rising. But and, I am a Virgo. I was born on September the 23rd. And so Virgo is your, your personal side. Okay, let's see what you've got for April. Okay, so this month, Virgo, yeah. you'll gather some acorns, dig a hole under a large oak tree, and hibernate for the winter. Oh, like I was born in the year of the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me tell you something, sense. Virgo. Nobody will even notice that you're gone. Oh, oh I find that very, very difficult to Straight believe. To the heart. <laughs> 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 once you, once, once you've met me, impossible to forget me. Oh, absolutely, Is it Frankie. I, I agree. I agree, Wilfredo. It's Thank great, you. great to have you back in Melbourne. It's fantastic that you could make it out here to Box Hill as mm -hmm. well. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. I can't tell you. Oh, you, you look. I have needed to get out of that shitty centre for, for a little while. <laughs> Today I understand I've finally that. done it. Yeah. They've dragged me away from the boring masses. Mm. And it's fantastic to have you here. And and the ladies of the studio are, are absolutely swooning mm -hmm. uh, as we speak. Susie, I should use her within seconds. I know, I know. I've, I've never seen Susie left speechless by any of our guests. But this is happening today and I'm, I'm totally wrapped. She, I just don't know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> my well, look face, into my his face, eyes. My face. Yeah, you can start with so his eyes and I'm work just, down but from it's there. It's hard to see through all these, like, you know, I feel like we're in jail or something. I feel like, I've, I feel like I've been objectified for far too long. <laughs> By members of the opposite sex, not only members of the opposite sex, some men too. I'm a gay icon in the BLT community. See, you've been pretty quiet over there too, Me? Peter. I reckon you're a little bit moved by a little... Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't be? Hey? Like, who think, wouldn't be? I think... I think Got less is more for me what, too about how I am and what how you're feeling about me, really. But, uh, men, men, uh, uh, men come and see my show <laughs> because they, they, they watch and they learn. When I was a small boy, I, I was known as El Nino de Granada, which means the child. <laughs> or the boy from Granada. I was a child star. I could sing before I could speak and I could dance. Like Susie, I was a dancer. <laughs> I could dance before I could walk. And when I was a little boy, I would sometimes go missing. 
Oh. Don't look at the clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, yeah. <laughs> I was, would go missing sometimes. And more my family would get together and they'd say, they'd play a little game called Where's Wilfredo? Oh. And they would listen for the sound of applause and laughter. Mm-hmm. And they'd follow it very carefully. And whatever, of course, the sound was coming around, whether I was stood on the bar or stood on a park bench or in the, ch- on the, ch- the pews in the church, they would always find me. And I would always have a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was older, I'd also go missing. Once I became an adult, with it, we used to play a game called Follow That Talent. <laughs> 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 I don't know why that's funny, Frank. It's funny, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, extra- it's, r- it's very amusing to me, but it's more amusing just to watch Susie try and undress you with her eyes. This is what, what I'm really enjoying. <laughs> I don't think I'm and, doing and that. And she hasn't even had a chance it. to look at your license plate yet. I mean, we haven't seen the well toned, strong, uh, glutinous Maximus that you seem to project to your audience on stage. Well, Frankie, if we go back to S- Susie for a minute, you don't, you don't need to <laughs> vocalise it. If there's a woman attracted to a man in a room, you don't have to point it out. The listeners will feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in the room, we all feel it. I think, you know, Susie, you, I think you're in season. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably what's going on. Are you a married woman, a single woman? <laughs> she <doesn't laughs> she's like me she doesn't want to lose her fan base she <laughs> likes to leave something to the imagination and we we'll leave this now to the imagination whatever's going on between me and Susie Frank you had a question about my masculinity uh, on uh, stage no just the, the way you present yourself on stage well, is, so is tell me I can't see how I present myself when I'm on stage I'm on stage I'm in well, the, for I'm in me, the present I moment mean, uh, I'm not in the past I'm not in the future I'm right there right now entertaining the well, I mean, just remove the fact that I I may or may not be com- a comedian. If when I'm looking at you on stage as a punter, I, I feel that you are the type of man that I want to be like. Like that is a man's man. You 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 so, just so you capture you capture. <laughs> What? Do you know how many times do I have to hear this? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. You I'm would. Sure, because it's the way you work, people, and the way women cannot take their eyes off you for a second. No, it's something geez. I've always wanted. Yep. And you seem to do it making no effort. Yeah, but again, we go back to my being objectified. I'm so much more than just... He's not a piece of meat. What about... <laughs> yeah. You've seen me on stage at the x I, I yeah, have. Yeah. I have. Twice. Which this week. Is, it's not exactly, for example... The London Palladium. It no. certainly is horrible. not. It is certainly is not. The it's word dive springs to mind. Yeah, but, but I like dives. Yeah. When mm. I go to America and I tour the United States, I like to... F- I always sniff out, Susie, the nearest dive bar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not interested in members' clubs. Mm. or anything. I like places where people are real, you know? Mm. I like places where your, the soles of your feet are sticking to the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> and the export is just this kind of place. I like it Australians. It is, yes, yes. Australians have this gift. Of, it's not really a gift, it's more of a cultural thing mm. about being direct. Yes. You know, I love places where people can really tell you what they think without packaging everything up. That's something, unfortunately, the English well, are, are, are expert at packaging. Mm-hmm. They can never say anything. Spe- speaking of direct. Okay, a little, speaking sorry. of England, just say good morning to them. If we can, because a few of my yes, fans yes. in the United Kingdom and in Spain, Sweden, they'll all be tuning in now and listening, yes. clutching their hot water bottles, squeezing their tea bags. <laughs> Poaching their eggs. Hello, good morning to all my fans in in the United Kingdom and across yep. Europe. And, of course, in New York, of course. I'm oh, just cool. about going to bed in New York. Yes, it is. In yep. New York, I think it's 2, 2 a.m., something like that, 3 a.m. But all I know there is a listener in Washington, oh, D.C. right now listening oh, in. Well, that's it. Same East mm-hmm. Coast time. Mia Farrow will be in her slippers and dressing gown now. <laughs> she certainly will Tongue be. Tongue between teeth, wondering what to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Mia Hello, Mia. Morning, evening. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you've got a hole in your panties. I do. I, oh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm not going to. I do. To I think I, I, might, I may have been sporting something extra there. Uh, Susie, look, Wilfredo was saying about Australians are direct. You've said nothing direct to Wilfredo so far. You normally give hard hitting, hard question interviews. You haven't asked any of the hard questions. Ask me something controversial, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk. Why? How do you feel, Wilfredo, <laughs> about, <laughs> about one, one Direction breaking up? Because ah, obviously they're your most hardcore, you know, opponents, they're, because all I the have, women and no, all. I am in a category, in a genre, all of my own. <laughs> I don't need One Direction. There's only One Direction I go, and that's up. 
<laughs> and only one. I'm not, there's enough, we don't share a market. No? The only difference, really, between myself and One Direction, one fundamental difference between me and One Direction is, is they have no talent at all, and I've got plenty. Ooh. Oh, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, no, I, mean, I'm not, I don't mime in my shows. I don't have to. I'm not a marketable commodity in the same ways as they are. But having said that, they're not here plugging their short the red violin. Exactly. That's this right. is true. Now, Hayley before <laughs> was talking about her conspiracy theories. I've, I've got to ask you, do you have, Will Frodo, any conspiracy theories? Well, it, I, I well we'll let him know. think about it. We'll no, go to I a quick break. Uh, what, can we talk about airlines, planes, yeah, yeah, let's planes go. going missing? Let's go. Yes, we can. Presidents getting assassinated. Yep, yes, we yep, can. Whatever you want. Well, that's princesses in Paris car crashes. Yes, yep. we can. Yeah, we can do all that. But we'll do that after the break. Let's go to a break. Wonderful. That was Top Loader with Dancing in the Moonlight. You're listening to White Horse Burundara Radio, the universe show, 3 WBC 94.1 FM online and on digital. Why yes. not? My name is Wilfredo. Welcome to the Wilfredo <laughs> Show. That song, Top Loader, did not. That's not their song, of course. That's a cover song. I'm thinking of covering it myself because uh, I'm, uh, I'm just Do you begging want to, give us, to be rescued. Give us a preview. Give us a preview of your cover of it. What? Well, because of Harry's uh, dancing in the moonlight. Everybody's <laughs> feeling warm and bright. I can hit notes with my voice that even a bank would find very difficult to catch. That <laughs> is amazing. I got a wonderful vocal range. Okay, before you take over over the whole show tell me <laughs> I'm going to share another horoscope mm. okay so Libra yeah this month you'll get your driveway resealed when it rains a little later your driveway will become extremely slippery your bins car and cat all slide into the street <laughs> okay there goes oh. that crazy oh it's breaking up it's breaking up a little bit what the is sound it? is breaking up a little bit oh, oh no and my headphones at least are breaking up a bit oh. and it's now they've gone completely that's okay. uh, Carry on. Carry I on. I hope the listeners didn't really notice that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so earlier in the show, I did a conspiracy theory yeah. about Snow White. Yes. I yeah. have another one. Go on. Yep. Still Snow, with Snow White, White and Scientology. Oh, okay. Oh, go on. Okay, so it's not really about Snow White, but mm. the, the Church of Scientology in the 1970s mm. had a program called Operation Snow White. Yeah. Right. This involved the Guardian's Office Department of the Church of Scientology infiltrating the U.S. government. So they did this by encouraging That's members right, of the church yeah. to take up jobs, whether they were secretarial, security, yep, yep. just working their way up inside the government. Mm -hmm. There were up to 5,000 covert agents in this operation. Yep. They claimed that their aim was to legally correct false government reports about the church's leaders and members. Mm -hmm. But really, they stole thousands of documents from the Internal Revenue Service, recorded confidential meetings, mm -hmm. and planted false information. Yep. Basically, they were trying to maintain their tax-exempt status mm. as a church. Then, in July of 1977, the FBI raided the LA headquarters of the Church of Scientology. Okay. And found the documentation of all of these plans infiltrating the no. U.S. government. Yep. They also found all these plans where the Church of Scientology were planning to frame different public figures for different crimes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, that's like the, the Tom Cruise, uh, John Travolta thing that just came out recently. Apparently, John Travolta's wanted to leave. I've heard about but this. But they're holding information over his head because when you join Scientology in the first you know year or so, mm. you do an, a session with a therapist and you've got a, a sort of like... Admit you reveal your sins. The, all the, the dark Yeah, secrets. and they've written it all down, and they're going to him, if you leave the church, what do you think we're going to do on, with your secrets? That's interesting, because the story that I read about that was yeah. John Travolta saying he would never, ever, ever leave them because they helped him through the death of his son, Jet. Well, and he said he has <laughs> nothing bad to say about Scientology. Either As he either. had a gun held to his head? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, Are you into Travolta Scientology? Soul. Are you John <laughs> Travolta, I'm sorry. Bless his cock and socks. <laughs> but he's a desperate man. Yes. Mm. Because what is probably is, is, I don't know what kind of family he's from, but if you no. have, I believe that if you have a good heart and you have a good friends and family around you, you don't need this kind of religion. Exactly. I'm not saying that people should not have a faith, should not have a spiritual connection in their own way with whatever they choose 
to feel connected with. But I'm sorry. I've been in Los Angeles many, many times. Yeah. I've played concerts in Los Angeles. Mm. And the Scientology building looms mm. over the sky. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's blood seeping from the door. <laughs> <laughs> down, the rivering down the steps, yeah, yeah, yeah. cascading down the steps. I don't know. It's something a little bit, a little bit uh, un- unsavory. It is a bit this strange. Scientology religion. The, the any children listening, keep away from those mm. nasty, naughty little Scientologists. The I hope <laughs> none of us go missing after this show. Oh, <laughs> yes. Can you imagine? Especially mm. not when I've got shows to do. In oh. No, Comedy exactly. <laughs> and where are your <laughs> shows? Violin. Yes. Yes. Mm. Sweetie, let's talk a bit further about conspiracy theorists. Okay, well, I'll just tell you how this one ended. <laughs> go on. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're still listening, you know. I am. All right, all right. Man, so no 11 one. of the members were charged and the most of them were very high up in the church. Uh, they all got around five-year prison sentences or something like that. Yeah. Wow. One of the people charged was Mary Sue Hubbard, who was the wife of the creator of the whole Church of Scientology, Al mm-hmm. Ron Hubbard. Ah, and I've heard about him. Yes, and he was named as a co-conspirator but never actually charged. But after this incident, he went into hiding for the rest of his life. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah, How so old is Scientology? Scientology? Very old. Like yeah. I don't know. He's the founder, isn't he? Ron yeah, Hubbard. yeah. So the religion's got to be younger than him. If it he's was, still yeah, alive, think so. yeah, that 20th old. century. Yeah, that's it, what I thought. Right. Um, I've read stuff as early as the 1930s. It could be yeah. earlier. But we we earlier. had a document from Scientology at one point. You know how they believe in Thetan levels? What's Thetan? Oh, no. Here we go. Okay. Explain it. A Thetan is an alien that lives inside you without getting into it too much. This is what they believe. Okay. Okay, but here's the thing. The whole the whole point of their training, yep. I'll call it, is to get the Thetans out of you so you're more in control of your life. This is their theory. Okay. Right? Mm. So... I feel sick. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway th- we found a document that said, and th- this is true, that if you shot yourself or shot someone else, you would be releasing their thetans. Oh, wow. So that's a good thing. Oh, no. But this is their own documents. This is ridiculous. Saying this. So they're virtually saying, shoot yourself and shoot other people and you're all good. You shouldn't get in trouble for it. Why are shoot we yourself giving dead or people, sh- Why are we giving these people much valued airtime? <laughs> Why are we know. discussing this, churchy people, well, with aliens inside you and shooting ourselves in the head? Well, you've got a genius sitting here <laughs> waiting to talk about himself. Yeah. Okay, okay, and genius. I get nothing but love. My uh, audience come to me. I don't try and convert them into anything that they're genius. not. Genius. Genius, Wilfredo. That's, yes. That's Sir right, Genius. Sweetie. And this is the first time you've looked me directly in the eye <laughs> for the I'm, last 45 I'm, minutes. No, no, I can't look away. This is, I'm going to be like this for the rest of my life. You're not a Scientologist, are you? No. No, no it wasn't no, some, no. Yeah. No, some way of not, No, no, no. My no. propaganda. No. Ties me into your web of Scientology. <laughs> 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 well, what is your favorite? <laughs> what? What is your favorite conspiracy theory? My favorite conspiracy is if apparently they say... That if you, you know, like in the 60s, mm. albums were recorded on vinyl. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And oh, no, he's playing records. them backwards. Yep. Yes. Well, my album, The Wonderful World of Wilfredo, I've not tried this. I don't know. But if you place it on the turntable mm-hmm. and play it backwards, mm-hmm. you know what the message is? What? what? Come and see Wilfredo every <laughs> night at the Red Violin, 9.45 p.m. <gasps> wow. Now, what a coincidence. I, I've not heard it myself. What a right. coincidence. I don't know whether that's true or not. No? But I don't know. They say there's hidden messages in my shows. Yeah, uh, in Devon, in England, which is where I had my first big break in th- with the English-speaking market. Yeah, somebody once called me a shapeshifter. A shapeshifter. Wow. See, he knows that's about actually, it. Actually, yeah, yeah. That's pretty big. It's not a compliment. It's, really that's a compliment. <laughs> A no, that is shifter. Yeah, well, they're suggesting that I eat babies and lizards. But, no, don't but not true. They think all I sh- eat is happy meals and bring them back up again. <laughs> but the tinfoil audience that believe that also believe the shapeshifters run the world. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to say in this, no? in this show about all of these conspiracy theories. There is a conspiracy theory about, you know, the Rolling Stones, the, the lips, yeah. mm-hmm, the yes. mouth, the tongue. Yeah, yeah. Somebody was telling me there was a hidden message in that. <laughs> I don't know what there you it could go. be. There's you, no punchline. You You're waiting for the punchline. No punch there, I don't know. I just heard it. That's for the and audience to investigate. I switched off immediately. Perhaps there was a punchline. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me. How are we all feeling right here, right now, with me here? Yeah, yeah good. Pretty special. Perfectly good, of course. We, Pretty special. We're going to move on to the next item, I mm, think. I we think we've got to go to a break. Song. So let's have a break, and when we come back, more from the Elegant Universe. 
Welcome back to the Elegant Universe, the show that's so wet, it'll make you moist too. We've had some amazing special guests, we'll get to those shortly. It's time for today's final horoscopes. Okay, so Scorpio, this month you will decide to learn a language. Then you realise you have no one else to speak it with. Even your dog will get sick of you practising verb charts with him. Sagittarius, this month you will notice a girl screaming in the park as she hangs from the monkey bars. You run, grab her, and put her safely on the ground. Turns out she was just play-acting with her friends, and you are now a registered sex offender. <laughs> it's a story of Peter's law. Anyway, go on. <laughs> Capricorn. This month, you will invest in a treadmill. You use it once before realizing how pointless it is to run on the spot inside your house. What a waste of money. Yes. Well, you've survived yet another edition of the elegant universe it has been an amazing show first we had wayne and keenan on uh australia's only balinese comedian yep he's all the way from bali that checked that he's only the balinese he's the only balinese comedian i pretty much why you know another one i don't know (laughs) know. i i I reckon i got it on half decent authority mine (laughs) yeah that he's the only balinese comedian actually currently working in Australia. Okay. Who Ka-tut. is from? The uh, the ads. The ads. Katut. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. loves Katut. <sighs> Who's Katut? Oh, well. He's not oh, the don't massage worry, guy. Take out too of long. Me. Yeah, <laughs> take too long. I've watched TV in like what is it now? Five years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> also, also, we'll get to you in a minute, Wilfredo. Dave Tolk was on the show. Yeah, that was good. Was. Come in and told us. Uh, the tragedy of being Dave Tolk. Mm. Yes, yes. And also the amazing Wilfredo. Wasn't I a wonderful Woo! listener? I was the best. <laughs> of the best. <laughs> of the best. Come to the red you, violin. Yeah, that's what I'm about to ask. Where's your show, Wilfredo? 9.45 nightly at the red violin, yeah. is, which is formerly the CBD nightclub, 14 McKillop Street, yeah, run by okay. two beautiful sisters called Just. I Dance. know them well. Oh, I know them gorgeous. well. Peter and I used to run a room there mm. many years ago. Beautiful sisters. Yes, beautiful they, they are. Yeah. They've adopted me more or less. <laughs> yeah, or less. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Frankie, our yes. conspiracy theory expert, what you got coming up? Fart Labs. Fart, Fart Labs on again tonight. The time has changed for the rest of the festival run. It is now on at 7.30 p.m., no that longer late. 8.30. I've had to change all my advertising, all my posters. It's killing me. But for listeners out there, if you've got kids, it's the end of the school holidays tomorrow. I'm doing a 3 p.m. matinee show, all for the kids. Please tell everyone you know, come along, tickets at the door, tickets through comedyfestival.com.au, tickets through my website, tickets are everywhere. Just come, please, and listen to the sound of my farts. Frankie's farting out tickets. Yes. I am, I am. I'd also like you to go and check out our new website. Peter and I have been putting it together. Mm -hmm. It's www.hypnostageshows.com mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty good. We've worked really hard on us. I've got to thank you again, Wilfredo, for coming in. You have made Woo! today's show. Have I just... you, have, <laughs> you have, you have, you have. Susie, you can't stop touching my knee, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your hands your yeah. yeah. That's it. We're through, Susie. We're through. <laughs> We're through. No I didn't more for even you know and me, we were buddy. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can have him. You've uh, you've been listening to the Elegant Universe on behalf of myself, the crew, and of course all our guests, Dave Tolk, Wayne, and the amazing Wilfredo. I'd like to ask you, listener, to do three things, mm-hmm. Haley. I'll, I'll be counting. Three things: be kind to small animals, pretend that you're normal, fake it till you make it, and dream great dreams. That was four things. Catch. That wraps up another life-changing edition of The Elegant Universe. Thanks for being part of the action. We love you. Wherever you go in this great, big, wide, wonderful world of ours, don't forget to tune in next time. Catch.